Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Welcome, viewers, to yet another edition of the Daily Devotion of the Anglican Church, Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion, are taken from our daily fountain. Today is Thursday, November 4, 2021. Our text is taken from Ecclesiastes chapter 6, from verse 7 through 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 6, verses 7 through 12. All people spent their lives scratching for food, but they never seemed to have enough. So are wise people really better off than fools? Do poor people gain anything by being wise and knowing how to act in front of others? Enjoy what you have rather than desiring what you don't have. Just dreaming about nice things is meaningless like chasing the wind. Everything has already been decided. It was not long ago what each person would be. So there is no use arguing with God about your destiny. The more words you speak, the less they mean. So what good are they? In the few days of our meaningless lives, who knows how our days can best be spent? Our lives are like a shadow. Who can tell what will happen on this earth after we are gone? Our topic is a striving after wind. A striving after wind. Again, we turn to the wise sayings of the wise man or the preacher as he is also known to be. In this section, he speaks to us through the use of mind-blowing phrases to describe the activities of men under the sun. So today, our focus is about our activities in this, on this earth our activities on this earth. When we talk about activities, it is all encompassing, ranging from our words, our actions, our work, and our relationship. Our words, our actions, our work, and our relationships, both in the eyes of God, before God, in relation to God, and in the eyes of men, in our relation to people around us. Our activities, the activities of men under the sun. And the wise man draws our attention to one basic fact, that in this life, man's focus is on the pursuit of, of these earthly things. The pursuit of these earthly things. Again, this is all encompassing. When we talk about earthly things that man pursues, it also ranges from material things, wealth, fame, big family size, the kind of houses we own, the kind of titles that are attached to our names, our prefixes or suffixes, as the case may be, they all form what we call all earthly things. And these are the things and many more that man pursues in life. Our attention is being drawn to this pursuit. Our attention is being drawn to the fact that we can pursue these things at the expense of our lives, at the expense of our eternity, when we pursue them outside of God. 
when we pursue them outside reverence for God, when we pursue them outside giving attention to the commandments of God, when we pursue them without recourse that there is a day that we will give account of our stewardship, of our lives as it were, before God, our maker. And this makes it vanity. We can pursue this. We can get the best of houses. We can get the best of houses. Well, of, 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 we can marry the best of wives. We can have the best and excellent, most intelligent of children. We can ride in the best of cars or airplanes. We can get the highest position of honor in this life, in this, on this earth. But if we do that outside of God, we put our lives to jeopardy. Our attention is being drawn to this fact. Why is our attention being drawn to this fact? The wise man tells us that everything about our lives has already, already been decided. It has already been decided by God. Before I was formed in my mother's womb, and that's what the Bible tells us God addressing Jeremiah in Jeremiah chapter 1. He says, before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. My knowledge of you informs what I formed you, I fashioned you to be. Your, the knowledge of God about you, the purpose of God for your life, the will that God wants you to accomplish in this life, informs how God crafted you, informs how God crafted me. So there is nothing that is yet to be decided. Everything about us has been decided. It therefore means that in our pursuit of earthly things, in our pursuit of the activities, in the discharge of our activities in this life, we should bear this in mind. That there is nothing that is left unsettled. God, beforehand, has settled them. In fact, he went further to say that because everything about our lives has already been decided, therefore, it is vanity to begin to argue with God about our destiny. You know, there is a song we sing today, and we are asking that our destiny should be, you know, uh, uh, changed. No, what destiny are we talking about? Before you came into this world, God has already destined you to be, to destined what you are going to be. So what we should actually be praying, saying in that song is that God should help keep our destiny intact. Help us to walk within the confines of the destiny he has crafted for us even before we were born, even before we were brought forth into the surface of this earth. Because it has already been decided by God. So, in this passage, there is a serious call to us. And we are living in terrible times where man's heart is driven by the pursuit of the ephemeral things of this life. And that is what seems to drive our lives. I don't know what drives your life today. As a child of God, as a man of God, as a woman of God, as a son of God, as a daughter of God, what is it that drives your life? In the Bible, we have examples of people who allowed the desires of this life, the things of this world, the quest for material things of this life to drive their lives. And we see their, how they ended catastrophically. And we'll give a few examples. From the Old Testament, we have the likes of Samson, a man that was a, man, a child of destiny from before conception right through to his birth. God has ordained him as a deliverer for the nation of Israel, the people of God, God's covenanted nation. God meant that Samson will be the one that will deliver his people from the tyranny of their enemies, of their oppressors, of the Philistines, and the enemies, the Gentile nations around them. And so God put a mark that distinct him, that set him apart from others. And God says, when the child comes, his hair will never be shaved. And when Samson came, the parents, Manoah and his wife, kept to that tenant. But Samson grew up, and instead of listening to the voice of God, instead of listening to the prompting of the Spirit of God, and walking in the ordained precepts that God has set for him to walk in, he allowed himself to be carried away by the grace that God has placed upon him, by the anointing that God has prayed upon him, by the deposit that God has put upon him, particularly the gift of physical strength. And he abused it. 
he allowed the quest to satisfy the pleasures of his flesh, draw him far away unto God, away from God, until he got to the point where he was physically, shamefully disgraced before the eyes of the world. He went to Gaza, he saw a prostitute called Delilah, and he went into her, he wanted to marry her, even against God's injunction, that the people of God were never to have any alliance, marital alliances with the Gentiles, with the peoples of the land amongst whom they are dwelling. Samson will not listen to that. He, dis, he, dis, he, he discounted us the, the instruction of his parents. He would not listen to the warning of his parents. He pushed himself forward and he went, quest to satisfy the earthly yearnings of his body, the earthly longings of his eyes. And that was what was be, going to be his end. Great, shamefully disgraced. And Delilah dealt with him. She continued to deal, you know, to, to, to play around him and play with him. And she played him into her hands. Or he played himself into her hands, I would say. And disclosed the secret of his strength to her. And the Philistines came upon him, bought him, and then they got out his, ears, his eyes, took him to prison, put him there, dumped him there for years. And then they will bring him out at some points and he will entertain them in the stadium. A man ordained for greatness. A man ordained for exploits by the Lord. A man that was ordained to be a savior to the people of God ended up being a defeated man because of his quest for the things of, the, of, 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 of life. What are you pursuing in life? What have you set your, your life to pursue? What is driving your life in this life, even as a child of God? We are actually addressing ourselves as children of God. We are not even talking about the unbelievers now. The unbelievers do not know beyond what drives them. The quest is a natural thing for them, for their body, for their longings, physical flesh longings, for their... Pride to drive them. But you, the child of God, what is it that drives you? We have another example in the Old Testament. In the person of Gehazi, a minister, if you say, a, a student that would understand, understood in the great prophet Elijah. Naaman came to seek God's intervention in his uh, situation of leprosy. By the reason of the witness of a small young girl, a slave girl, a Jew that was taken into his house. Through her he heard that there was a deliverer in Israel, that the God of Israel saves. And he came to seek the salvation of that God of Israel for his life and for his situation. And here was Elisha and his servant, a great man of God, who was tutoring, uh, tutoring this young one to take over from him when he's no longer there. And he did the work clean for Naaman without taking anything from him. And he says, go, tell the story. Go and bust it abroad in your land, in Syria, that there is God in Israel that saves, that delivers. By so doing, there could be a winning over of the people of Syria unto the God of Israel. And Naaman went. After every entreaty to Elijah, you know, for Elijah to take something from him, Elijah refused. And he went away. But Gehazi, Elijah's servant, was hurting deep within him. Why would my master do this? Why would we all do this great thing over the life of a heathen? And we let him go like that. After all, he's not an Israelite. Why should it be? And he went after Ge uh, 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 Naaman to take a bribe, I will call it, to take from those things that Elijah would not take. That Elijah would not take. And he took them. And something very interesting, little did he know that wherever he was, the eye of God was following him. There is nowhere you go that the eye of God is not upon you. There is nothing I do that the eye of God is not upon me. And so the eye of the Lord followed him through Elijah. Through Elisha. And he took it and he thought, Elisha would never know. After all, I didn't tell him I was going to go after Naaman. So he wouldn't even know. But when he got back and his master confronted him and he told a lie. And Elijah told him, was my eye not with you when you were taking those things from Naaman? Now, something very interesting, and that frightens me, that Elijah said to him, 
the leprosy of Naaman is now being transferred to you and to your household and to their generations after them. That is the consequence that comes with focusing our minds on the pursuit of earthly wealth riches. Striving after the wind. Pursuing things that have no eternal value. Pursuing things that would not take us to eternity with God. Pursuing things that would cause us to end our eternity in hellfire. Rather than the paradise of God with the people of God. What are you focusing your mind on? What is that thing that is driving your mind? And Gehazi lost it. He lost the blessings. He lost the right of being Elijah's inheritor. He lost the right of being the next prophet of the people of God in Israel. He lost everything. Your quest can lead you to the point that you miss out of the people of God. You miss out of the protection of God. You miss out of the blessings of God. You miss out of the prosperity that God has ordained for his children. So what is driving you? Are you striving after the winds? Or you are focusing your mind on those things that God is pleased with. On those things that God would want you to pursue. On those parts of life that God will want you to walk in. There is a danger in striving after the wind. It will take you to the destruction. And in the New Testament, we have another example of men who instead of focusing on pos the pursuit of things that will take them, that will give them eternal value, focus his heart on the pursuit of that which has only this earthly value. Judas Iscariot. Again, he was not a mean person. He was not an outsider. He was not only a disciple of Jesus. In fact, he was one of the trusted people because you have to trust somebody to entrust the custody of the resources of the group into his hands. Judas Iscariot was the treasurer of the group. He was keeping the monies. That shows that there was a level of trust that was reposed upon him. And yet, Judas neglected that trust that was placed upon him. His eyes was not focused on the blessing that come with that trust, on the blessing that come with that honor, on the goods that will come with that position that occupies. He felt it was not enough for him. He will go a step further to ask for more, to get for more. And he went and sold Jesus Christ. He went to the Pharisees. He went to the chief priests. He went to those who have conspired together against Jesus, who wanted to deal with Jesus, who wanted to take Jesus out of the scene so that they will continue to have their field there, so that they will continue to determine what happens, so that they will continue to run their affairs as they used to be. Keep the status quo was their focus. And Judas went to him. And in a very prominent member of the disciples, a trusted man went and sold his master for 30 pieces of silver. And he collected the money. And he promised to betray Jesus to them. And indeed, he betrayed Jesus to them. And they came and he gave them a sign. And when he was before Jesus, he gave out the sign and they arrested Jesus. And they took him. And they went, gave him all kinds of punishments, bodily punishments, and up to the point of crucifying him on the cross of Calvary. A painful death, a disgraceful death, a shameful death. All thanks to Judas, who went for only 30 silvers, sold him out. But how did he end? Even that money that he collected, the Bible tells us he couldn't use it. It was after the master had been killed that his eyes arrested, that his eyes opened. And the Bible says he went, returned the money to them, they would not take it, threw it away, and he went and hung himself. That is one consequence that the pursuit of material things, a chasing after the wind, can bring upon a soul. I pray that that will not be experienced in the name of Jesus Christ. But for that not to be, you have to turn your life over. Hand over your life to Jesus. Ask Jesus to help you. Ask Jesus to take you by the hand and walk with you. Ask Jesus to release, activate his Holy Spirit upon your life that will direct and guide you your lifetime, that you may walk in the path of the Lord, the path of obedience, the path of reverence, the path of respect for God and the things of God, that you may commit your life to the pursuit of those things that have eternal value, particularly the cause of the propagation of the gospel. You know, we have people in the church today who are ready to do anything but to go out and tell somebody that God loves them in Christ Jesus. Gone are the days that men would, would pleasure take ordinary tracks. They go to motor parks, they join the trains, they go to streets and they are shining these tracks. We are too big today for that job. 
We are too big today to carry trucks and distribute. What will men say about our position? Director this, director that in the office. Ah, oh, this is the chairman of this organization. He is the director of this conglomerate. He is, oh, this big pastor, even amongst those pastors. He is a canon. He is a venerable. Oh, he is a bishop. How can I be seen distributing tracts? And we think that that is not important. We leave that aside and we are pursuing the mundane things. May God deliver us from the pursuit of mundane things. May God deliver us from the pursuit of things that translate at the end of the day only into chasing after the wind. Again, the wise man concluded that these put together is vanity. Vanity upon vanity. So what will you, call, what, what will you merit you if you continue in the pursuit of vanity? Why don't you retract your steps? Why don't you come back to pursue that which has eternal value? That which will place your name in the records of history of those who slept for the Lord, who labored for the Lord, who break grounds for the Lord, who brought in men and women through the shadow of the gospel into the faith of the Lord, thereby saving them from condemnation, translating their lives unto eternity with Christ. Why don't you save yourself as well? Save your soul from eternal destruction to eternal redemption by retracting yourself from the pursuit of mundane things of this life to the pursuit of that which has eternal value. I pray God will help us as we go out today in the pursuit of our activities. The word of God will guide us in the choices we make. The word of God will guide us. The spirit of God will guide us and direct our footsteps to the place where God would want us to be. Remember, Everything about your life has already been decided. There is nothing you can change. The only change you can bring about is bring yourself into agreement with God about that which has decided up for you. Bring yourself into agreement with God about that destiny that he has crafted for you. And that is where you will find peace. That is where you will find joy. That is where you find rest. That is where you find help. That is where you find eternal satisfaction. May that be your portion. In the name of Jesus Christ. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for your word. The Bible says that the entrance of the word gives light to the simple hearted. We have heard your word. Create a simple heart in us where your word will find a dwelling. Make our hearts vital ground, O oh God, where as this word falls on that ground, it will germinate, it will grow to the point of bearing fruits that have eternal value. Help us, O oh God, in the, in the pursuit of our activities today and in the days ahead, particularly in this month of November, never to lose sight of your divine plans for our lives. To remember that you have already ordained our destiny, you have crafted it, that we may bring ourselves into the confines of that destiny and walk towards accomplishing your purposes for our lives to the praise and glory of your name, to our blessing and to the blessing of humanity and to the growth of your church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of The Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen.